tasted HIV infections in children and in infants in the neonate, in the neonatal unit at the Barabona Hospital are designed a study to try and prevent postpartum transmission through breastfeeding. HIV infected women were told of the risks of transmitting HIV through breastfeeding and of the risk of diarrheal diseases and even death if breastfeeding were avoided. And based on the information, they made a choice of either to breastfeed or not. I followed up these women and their babies to evaluate whether it was possible and safe not to breastfeed children whose mothers were HIV infected, HIV infected in Soweto. We found that in Soweto, avoiding breastfeeding was safe and that we could reduce postnatal transmission. Our research was provocative and it caused a lot of dissent in South Africa. But our research led to informed choice and the right of women to make their own decisions regarding infant feeding. Fortunately, today we have triple therapy and women now can take their children and breastfeed. And the agonizing choices and the stigma women, women faced in the 90s are over. Through much of the work done at the Perinatal HIV Research Unit at Chris Honey Barabona Hospital, we established the scientific evidence that changed practice, which has led to the reversal of HIV transmission in infants, and where we can begin to dream again of no, no HIV in children, knowing that the eradication of HIV in children is a real possibility. The clinical research we did in our research unit at the Kasani Barabon Hospital also demonstrated that early initiation of treatment in HIV infected children reduced deaths in children by two thirds. And our findings changed practice not only in South Africa, but in Africa and globally. And now every child who is born with HIV um, is put rapidly onto treatment. And this is all because of a study done in Soweto. Honey Barabara Hospital. For more than seven years, in seven years. In addition, our work in implementation science to roll out PMTCT in Soweto served as the foundation for mass rollout at a country level. The rollout of PMTCT is making the elimination of pediatric HIV plausible. When I first started treating children in South Africa with antiretrovirals, I saw them leave the hospitals, go to school, get their metric go to universities and get their degrees. And that is a wonderful thing to see. Some of my colleagues here, including Laurence Mahogany that's sitting there, she should just wave. In 2003, with, the, with, with PEPFAR funding, I uh, put a thousand people onto treatment in nine months. And this kind of dedication, taking the science that you learn in the clinic and rolling it out uh, is testament to the kind of work that Sowetan that we did in Suez and what and what this doctors do, uh, that they take their research findings and they roll it out and they make huge differences to people um, at, a, at, at, a, at a community level and at a country level. So I do I do want to acknowledge the, the clinical doctors that are here who have done amazing work um, in Suez um, around antiretroviral therapy. But I do digress and let me get back to my story. Before the rollout of ARVs and before PTCT interventions were available. Circumstances in the late 90s and early 2000s were very difficult, and with AIDS denialism, giving AZT to pregnant women became a subversive activity in South Africa, and our doctors were under threat from the state. We saw PEP, we saw PEP demonstration sites, uh, demonstration sites. PEP is uh, post-exposure prophylaxis, and we give it to, to women who've been exposed, uh, who've been raped, and to try and prevent HIV. We saw PEP demonstration sites closed down, and a doctor losing his job, giving PrEP for victims of rape. We saw ambulances being turned around from hospitals, refusing to give women who were HIV infected the virapine while they were in labor. At that stage, there were many heroes and warriors, and I think we probably heard about them um, um, two days ago, that changed our local landscape. And, this, and most notable of them was, was the Treatment Action Campaign, who lobbied for treatment access and through winning a landmark constitutional court case, the National Department of Health was instructed to begin providing mother-to-child transmission interventions for HIV-infected women. Now, I don't know if any of you can remember those times and how wonderful it was um, after that landmark court case to, to start to roll out antiretroviral therapy to, to women who were HIV-infected and pregnant. At the same time, in Cozy Johnson, who was a child, he was infected and he was, he, was, he was public with his HIV status. And he became the voice of HIV, uh, the voice of children with HIV. And he highlighted the severe stigma and discrimination facing children as they navigated school entrance 
as their mothers hit their diagnoses, their mothers faced alienation from their communities and were discarded by loved ones as they died. And Hosey, the public, victor, the public figure, was able to share what it was like to be infected, to live with HIV, and what it was like to be at his mother's funeral and how much he missed her. At that time, Mbeki was publicly questioning the link between HIV and AIDS, and despite graveyards filling up, he and his dissident friends, both within South Africa and abroad, continued to propagate AIDS denialism, while being propped up by many South African government officials, including Monte Shabalala, the then Minister of Health. But back to science. At that stage, strangely enough, South Africa was making an investment in HIV vaccine science, and through the South African Medical Research Council, so that the South African AIDS Vaccine Initiative, or SAVI, was being formed. And some people here, yeah, like Caroline Williamson, um, are still involved in some of the vaccine developments. So we started off at uh, trying to build um, a, a, a pipeline, a local pipeline. And so South African scientists from all universities collaborated together and designed two HIV vaccines that were advanced into the clinic. We had evaluated the South African HIV vaccine in two clinical trials and this was the first HIV vaccine approach to be developed by African scientists in Africa. But we've also now seen the fruits of millions of dollars of NIH funding that have gone into HIV vaccine development. We are collaborating with international and public-private partnerships to execute a large clinical trial to evaluate for the first time in many years a vaccine approach that may lead to an efficacious vaccine regimen that may lead to registration if deemed effective enough. This trial, the HB10702, was launched this week and will enroll 5,418 to 35 year olds. Taking place in 15 sites in South Africa, this trial will not only investigate the vaccine regimen, but will also develop clinical trial capacity in sites never exposed before to clinical research. The HB10702 is a combination of six years of collaborative efforts of many scientists, both within South Africa and in the USA, and is a testimony to the efforts of many dedicated people committed to finding an HIV vaccine. During my career in South Africa, first as a clinician, then as a medical researcher in the time of HIV, we have been exposed to human medical tragedy at a scale never seen before. We have witnessed the dedication of the healthcare workers at the coalface and have been part of the triumph of science. I have a different narrative about the, 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 the way doctors managed HIV. As a doctor seeing HIV roll out at, 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 at my hospital in Soweto and working with other doctors and other nurses um, in the hospital, I have a different narrative about what happened. I saw compassionate, caring and dedicated staff. I saw doctors frustrated, I saw doctors becoming activists, I saw doctors fighting, I saw doctors bringing in antiretroviral therapy from overseas, I saw doctors uh, buying AZT with their own money to give it to, to infected women. So I saw a, a compassionate and caring um, healthcare, healthcare working force who battled um, on the front lines um, in hospitals trying to, to curb and maintain this disease. Um, when they were not entering our therapy. And so you can imagine the personal tragedy that, that rolled out every day in hospitals in South Africa in that time before antiretrovirals were available. And so it's been amazing for me to be part of the most profound medical life-saving advances in medical history ever, and that is antiretroviral therapy. Antiretroviral therapy has saved more lives in such a short space of time than any other innovation. And yes, um, medical doctors are, 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 are loved by medical interventions and we're not so good at, um, at the soft things. But we do know that um, giving antiretroviral therapy to people brings lives, brings life into South Africans. And so there's been such joy being involved as an investigator, um, doing science um, in South Africa and seeing the science uh, make a difference. To, to men and women. It's, it's been such a joy to be part of, um, of the science um, in HIV and, and, and part of the science in, in, in treatment and in mother-to-child transmission. And I'm very proud to be part of the, of the science that has helped breathe life into South Africans. And I'm going to end to say that all this progress that we've seen with antiretrovirals and with um, almost eliminate, eliminating pediatric HIV, I do hope 
that an HIV vaccine will be added to some of our crimes that we've seen in South Africa. So thank you very much.